what's up rock stars it's rocks and i am coming to you today with the review for love and hip-hop new york season 10 episode 13 somewhere in there i'm not even sure what episode it is it'll be right on the screen i believe <laughs> anyway you guys let's get to it shall we all right, you guys, so the show opened with Remy Ma. Remember, she and uh, Papoose were on their way to the courthouse last week um, just to see what her fate was going to be. She said that she was going in with the hopes that they was just going to drop the case. And it turns out that's exactly what they did. They said that they did not have enough evidence to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that she had busted Britney in the eye. So <laughs> as of now, we still don't know how she got that shiner. But um, as far as the court's concern, uh, the good state of New York, um, uh, the prosecution, yeah, they are letting this case go. So she's very, very happy. Um, she doesn't have to deal with that courthouse anymore. They've taken the monitor off. She gets in the car. She's just so excited she could scream. So later on, we see her. She is at work. Um, her podcast, well, you know, it's Joe Button's podcast that she works on with um, him and a couple of other people. And after it's over, um, she's just telling them how she's just so happy that it's done. You know, um, basically, the girl was lying, trying to say that she had hit her, you know, and they was trying to use her past against her, you know, the, the troubles that she had. But thank God the prosecution had a brain and was able to see through it. Joe said, oh, they was trying to weaponize your past. She said, yes, that's exactly what they was trying to do. Okay, use her past against her. But nope. It didn't work that way. So now she's ready to get back to it. Just her regular life in general. Well, what's going on with you, Joe? I saw you and Sin together. Does this mean that it's back on? Well, you know, Joey don't want to put nothing too serious on it. Right now, they're just happy that they're able to communicate and um, talk, hang out, you know. And um, so they're moving in a good direction. But we won't say that we back to get together just yet. Now, speaking of Sin, we see Sin and Jonathan. It's so funny. These two always have to go and sit and talk together about what happened when they were together at some function when some shit went down. They actually meet Yandy in the park where the people are playing chess. I was like, Mona and got this fool of fucking niggatry up in here with these men trying to concentrate. Take that shit somewhere else, shit. But whatever, they sit down, they talk about Samaya's event. You know, Yandy says she couldn't read her um her little positivity note because she was not feeling it, okay? What did your note say? It said that I'm ready to forgive people that have hurt me. And I'm not really ready to forgive Kim Bella. She said that um she's never had anybody throw a drink at her ever in her life. Okay, and pretty much Yandy has decided that she is done with Kim Bella. I was like, thank you. Can you guys just go on and put a... Let's, let's put that bitch to bed, okay? Well, Sin got a little bit of news herself. She said that she finally sat down and talked to uh, Tahiri. And um, she don't really know what's wrong with that bitch. She was real spicy. Yandy was like, well, when you say spicy, what do you mean? And she says, well, you know, everything is a I'm that ex. And, you know, as if Joey doesn't have the inclination to move on from her. Like, she's always going to have a spot in his life or something like that, you know. And Sin's just like, she's just goofy for that. I was thinking to myself, I guess Tahiri is probably good for Joe and Sin's relationship because at least Sin now feels like maybe she got something. You know how we women do, honey. That competition get to coming up and now we got, to, we feel like we got to fight for it. We might not even want the nigga, but baby, you ain't getting them. So, you know, maybe that's where um, Sin is heading, why she and Joey are able to communicate. Maybe not, but I'm just saying that Tahiri will show push you in that direction. Now, Jimmy, okay, the house is ready, okay? He bought this house for Mama Jones, and I remember Christy was the person that decorated it all up and um, is ready to go. Of course, they didn't tell Mama Jones that because Mama Jones and, uh, don't really see it for Christy, and I guess Christy probably don't really see it for Mama Jones either, but um, that's her man's mama, so she gonna do whatever her, her man asked her to do. I still love how the fact that he bought the mama house and he lost his own damn house. Now, where they do that at, I'm not quite sure, but okay. Anyways, they sit down and Chrissy tells him about the um, event that Samaya had, you know, this clean tea or this, you know, calming tea or whatever. And uh, Yandy and Kimbella was there, you know, and she didn't even... She didn't even get into it with Yandy, you know. As a matter of fact, Kimbella was acting such a fool. Chrissy was kind of looking at her like, bitch, what's wrong with you? 
<laughs> but um yeah she didn't she didn't get into it with yandy you know maybe the common tea helped he said i'm glad that you know you were able to um you know get along with everybody and she says well i really just feel like i'm tolerating and honestly you guys why is chrissy and jimmy on this show why they honestly don't have anything going on. I mean, they we did try to do the woman's, the millionaire's club or whatever, but we ain't heard nothing else about it. It's just sort of like, what are they there for? It's just... Wah, 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 wah. But uh, yeah, the house is ready. Gonna give it to Mama Jones. So he goes and gets her, brings her over to the house. You know, she says that she's really excited because the last couple of years has just been a bummer. Um, everything, she lost everything, burned down to the ground. I guess she's been staying in a hotel until they finally finished the house. So today is um, the grand opening. Mama Jones is getting to see it. So she's going through and oh my gosh, she loves it in here. Oh my God, this is so beautiful. Oh my God, you did that, son. Thank you so much. She gets to crying and everything and he tells her that she should thank Chrissy too. And she was like, Chrissy? And he was like, yeah, because Chrissy did all of the, the design and decorating in here now the house is empty so i mean i don't know what designing and decorating unless she was the one that helped the architect figure out how they wanted the rooms arranged i mean if that's what you mean but it ain't no damn furniture in there for you to be decorating so whatever oh why he say chrissy did it though child now all of a sudden mama jones got a problem she wanted a red door chrissy said the red door wasn't really gonna go Okay, she don't give a fuck what Chrissy said. This her house, you know, it go left real fast. Of course, Jimmy was like, this is my damn house. I'm the one bought this house for you. I'm telling you, that's why it's very difficult for me to, to uh, receive gifts, you know, because there's nothing more that I hate than somebody that will throw their gift in your face. Now, fuck it, you the one gave the shit to me. You know, I don't know if Mama Jones asked, but I don't never ask for anything. You know, that is really, it is very difficult for me for, to ask for shit. So when you come giving me some shit and then you come back and say, well, I did this, that, and the other for you. I ain't asked for that shit. And if you was giving it to me out the kindness of your heart, you wouldn't even say shit like that. Now, if you didn't want me, you know, let me stop it <laughs> i'm about to go off on a tangent but i hate when people do that even though all of a sudden mama jones was tripping now you're gonna be grateful for this house your shit burned down to the ground you didn't look like you was able to replace it um your son says that he bought this house for you so uh let's just let's just take this house and be happy please she looked like she about to leave out then she realized oh damn this is my house you get the fuck out get out of my house telling jimmy because she don't care what he say he don't have no right to treat her this way and um chrissy definitely don't have a right now let's get to the annoying couple that is safari and erica you guys i was looking at erica's face for a long time last night i mean i was really looking at it and i was like she looks different i'm not quite sure what it is but her face doesn't have like that soft, pretty, you know, it looks like she's had some work done to her face and I'm not sure if she even needed it, but I don't know if it's, she's just aging, but I'm, her face looked different. I just kept looking and I was like, her profile didn't even, almost didn't even look like her at certain times. So I don't know, maybe after she had the baby, it'll look different, but right now it ain't any. Anyway, that ain't got shit to do with nothing. Um, Safari said that he's poured everything into this album that he's got coming out straight. <laughs> so annoying. The album is about to be released. You know, he is in his old neighborhood in the car with Erica. And he's just telling her how excited he is. And he's showing her his old high school and, you know, what he used to do. And, you know, I guess all the dreams that he finally feel like he's realizing. Well, Erica's like, you know, that's all fine and good and everything. But, you know, the baby about to be here. You done had your fun out here in New York. I've been out here with you. But I want to get home to Atlanta. Time to pack up all this shit. Take it on down to Atlanta so I can begin nesting. I'm not sure why she can't nest in New York, but I guess her home is actually, um, she feels like Atlanta is her home. He was just like, listen, can we talk about that later? Like, today, I just want to bask in the glow of my album. I was like, oh, gosh, she about to go into the spoiled, pouty Erica mode. You mean to tell me you can't do anything that your wife tells you to do? You know, it's just like, oh so tired of these two and it's bullshit their, their storyline right now is just bullshit but we'll go on and we'll entertain because mona wants us to she tells him that it's time for him to hang up the chain and then you know that he's gonna be a dad and he needs to make this decision you know this music shit 
I mean, she might as well say it ain't gonna jump off for you. So let's go back to where our sure thing is. He says, I promise you, I'm gonna get on back to Atlanta so that we can, you know, begin your nesting cycle. But right now he's about to pull up on his, you know, his fans and shit, his, his little party for his album, right? Tell me why Mona got the fucking concert stadium cheer <laughs> track streamed into the show when he get there. It's all of 53 people there. And why is it sounding like he at the damn um, Staples Center and all these people are cheering? It was this cheer. was like Mona bitch now these people don't give a fuck about no street they probably don't even know what this song or what this album entails but you know what Mona was paying so they there he's excited actually it's not a it's not a um album release I don't think I think it was like he was they were out there because he had a billboard yeah that was it he had the double billboard of his album up there and um he wanted to go celebrate it so he had to get up there on the billboard you know erica's watching like oh my husband my husband okay he's so excited about this album that nobody's gonna buy <laughs> <laughs> so later on we see Erica and again she's complaining about you know Safari and his cute little music uh, career and whatever he thinks is about to happen but you know what she about to have his baby she ready to go to Atlanta you know and begin the nesting okay um, so she meets with Tahiri she's telling Tahiri how much she loves it in Atlanta and she's just ready to go Tahiri was just like well you know just tell your husband I mean that's your husband he's the father of your child you guys are one now so you know whatever you say might as well go. I tell you, that safari is about to be so henpecked. I know he try to act like he be throwing down the law and laying it down and making sure that Erica, Erica runs everything up in that household. So if Erica say we going to fucking Atlanta, damn it, we going to Atlanta. She tells Tahiri that she has a fear that safari is not going to be there when she goes into labor. I guess when she had her first kid, she was by herself and she just really wants to know that safari is going to be there. Well, that's your husband again. Man up. He's gotta be there let him know all of this so she's back with safari he's all you know this album about to be the end all be all he got pap and fresher there now this is actually the um release party he's got pap and fresher there um and um i guess they're gonna be performing that wild ass animalistic sounding mess i'm sorry you guys it's just mess it, it, it really was just mess. When them three was up on that stage, even when Pap was rapping, I was just like, first of all, he was rapping so fast, I couldn't understand not one word he was saying. That was the way. And, you know, usually Pap, I can, he usually enunciates very well when he raps quickly. Um, I don't know what the fuck he was about it. Between him and that wild ass in the face fresher, you know, something is bitch. Something is bitch. Something is bitch. It was unfortunate. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> I was just like, Pap, why are you on this? I mean, I guess Pap was like, you know, whatever work he got to do to get his name back. I mean, he's out there. You don't have to. I was just like, oh. Mm. So once it was over and, you know, Erica's there. Remember, she's there to support her husband. Once it's over, she tells him to come on over here and sit down with her. And um, she reiterates. You know, I'm pregnant. I'm about to be nine months pregnant. I'm ready to go back to Atlanta. You know, this music thing that you're doing was real cute and everything, but it's time to go on back. I mean, you're up here trying to start a family and you are um, coming out with an album at the same time, okay? And she knows that that means that you're gonna have to be promoting this album and that could take him away from her, okay? I mean, I can understand. She's nine months pregnant, you know? You can really go into labor anywhere in those nine months. Um, you know, anywhere in those weeks from 36 to 40 weeks. And she wants to know that her husband will be there. Now, that's not being unreasonable. But what's silly about this whole thing is, didn't you know you was pregnant while he was doing this album thing? Why you guys didn't plan out the time 
to make sure that you had your baby first before he started going balls to the wall trying to promote this bullshit. So she's all wanting to go home and he is like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got a really great opportunity. You know, um, some company or somebody then approached him and want him to go on a fucking tour, you know. Oh, and it happens to be right when she's going to be in the middle of her like ninth month. And um, he's going to be gone for two months. Now, we all know good and damn well that Safari has lived his whole life just so that he can have a woman and have a damn baby. How many times has he told us that he wants to have a family? Now, you mean to tell me that the nigga going to sacrifice all of that and go on some damn tour when he knows his first child is about to be born? And you guys really want us to believe this fucking story, Mona, bitch? <laughs> Got your goddamn nerves. You know, and then he's trying to say, like, he just going to do it. And Erica's looking at him like, what do you mean you're going to go? He's like, oh, sorry, I just, I, I got to go with this stupid ass look on his face. Nigga, that woman will beat your ass. You ain't going no damn where. You ain't fixing to get us sitting up here thinking that you about to go on some damn tour when you know you're not going to. Now, you guys, we see Fresher with a PH. He goes to meet with Jen. Um, he hasn't really talked to her. You know, they still live in separate places. Um, and But she agreed to get together with him that day. I guess he thought he was getting with her and the kids, but no, it's she, the kids still with her people. It's just her and him. Fresher with a PH was just like, well, you know what? I wanted this to be all about the family. You know, business is going pretty good right now. You know, he working with Olivia. You know, and that looked like that might jump off. I was like, hell, <laughs> okay. He, he, he think it's about time to move his family out the hood. Okay, gonna take them out of the, where do they live? And child, don't, don't let me get these boroughs mixed up. Was it the Bronx or is it Brooklyn? He gotta move them out the hood, whichever one it is. Sorry to my New York rock star. Move them out and he gonna move them out to New Jersey. Well, Jen, the, the groupie slayer, now she still ain't forgot about, you know, this bullshit that Jada was talking about, this money situation. Before we start talking about doing any of that, we all need to sit down and talk. Well, of course, Fresher with a PH cannot let Jen, the groupie slayer, sit down with him and, and Jada. So he kind of diverts her from that. He don't think it's a good idea, but look, he gonna fix this because, listen, the family, it's all about their family. All about what they deserve. And she deserves it all. She deserved the house. She deserved the ring, the marriage, you know, the happily ever after. He gonna give all that to her. Just let him fix everything that's going on right now. He promises he gonna make her an honest woman. And so Jen the groupie slayer was just like, okay, okay, I'm gonna give you a chance to see if you can, you know, if you can fix this whole situation, y'all. <laughs> you know, but um, so we gonna see what Fresh with a PH gonna do? Well, Fresh with a PH goes to meet with Jada. Oh, Jen the groupie slayer is not going to like this. Of course, Jada looks at him and she was just like, what's up, Blackie Chan? He was like, Blackie Chan? Yeah, Blackie Chan. You know, you always disappearing. I mean, I'm not quite sure where the correlation came up, but that's what she was saying. Fresh with a PH, he coming in peace. Okay, he he came by himself because he want to try to fix this whole money situation with Jada, you know, so he can move on with his life with Jen the groupie slayer. He ain't said that part. That's the part that we know. So, um, you, you know, Jada was just like, I'm real annoyed because look, I got all these opportunities and things that I need to do, but I can't move the way that I want to move because I don't have my fucking money. Okay, and Fresh with a PH was like, that's right, that's right, you, your 60000 that we turned it down to 40,000. I know you need that money, but um, I ain't got it right now. <laughs> well then, what the hell are you over at the house for? He says, well, I'm gonna pay $2,500 a month until it's done. She says, okay, I mean, I know, you know, a little bit of money is better than no money. So she said, we gonna write that down in a contract? I mean, what, what, what? And he was like, yeah, we gonna, I mean, damn, can you just wait a minute? She was like, yeah, I need it written down in a contract because I need my money. I need to know when it's coming. When you gonna give me my first payment? We going to the bank right now? Oh, fresh with a PH was just like, I mean, I really ain't planning on giving her this money, but you know, she trying to press me like this. I mean, the contract contract was just supposed to be buying me a little bit of more time. He says, give me till the top of the month. Okay. And she was just like, mm, I know you got some money on you. Okay. Like a crackhead. She beating his pockets and everything. I said, girl, look at what this man has reduced you to. You on a reality show 
<laughs> patting the broke niggas' pockets, looking for your little bit of change, girl. You ain't getting that money. You ain't getting that money. But what can she do? Listen, Negro, I'm going to want my money at the top of the month. I said, you and everybody else, good luck with that. Now, jumping back to Fresh with a PH and Jen, the groupie slayer. Oh, uh, he done came through, you guys, and Mona done rented them a house out there in New Jersey. Got the family out the hood. Then the groupie slayer's like, oh, we gonna do this to this room. We gonna this, that, and the other. I'm put up some, you know, some blinds and some curtains, and we gonna get the couches. And Oh, she doing all that. Fresh with a PH was like, hold up, hold up. You just said you want to get in the house. We ain't said nothing about furniture. <laughs> Y'all want to sleep on something? Slow your roll. I don't have the money right now. She was like, oh, but you gonna have it. He was like, well, wait a minute. I had to go and, you know, I did talk to Jada about the money. Oh, Lord. Now, y'all know he shouldn't have said that to Jen the groupie slayer. Not while she having her good time dreaming about her new home in New Jersey. You did what? You went and talked to that bitch without me? She was like, I don't see why you needed to do that. I said, listen, I didn't want to, I, you know, I felt like she deserved more than that. I said, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, she deserved. Who give a fuck about what she deserved? Is it fair to me that if I go over there and I rip that bitch's head off, what you gonna do? You can't do nothing but help me hide the body. You know, she always got to be in a bitch face like this. He said, listen, listen, Jen the groupie slayer. We already settled on the money. She said, no, we did not. Okay, but I'm going to tell you what we going to do. We going to fix up my motherfucking house. We going to do everything that I need to do around here. And then, and only then, if there's some money left over, then you can go on and get that bitch whatever the fuck she need from that. But um, I'm getting my house fixed first. We will deal with that dusty ass, crusty ass, thirsty ass bitch later. Okay, and fresh with a pH just sitting there looking stupid. All right, rock stars, that is it. It is hot in this car. I was freezing yesterday. It's hot today. This weather is so crazy out in Atlanta and really all over from what I understand. But anyway, got to do Love and Hip Hop Miami next. Make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is Sports Rocks. Everything else I do will be in the bottom box. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I plan on doing the same. Till next time, rock stars. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.